Welcome to Poetry Palace TV. I'm Tom Beale. We're reading my Diary of Poets series. Uh, I am reading on volume one. This is episode four. I am reading the whole series because I am not yet ready to read volume 18, which is Internal Revolutions Written to My Late Wife. That is the whole reason this show is on the air is because people think that's helpful. The producer actually gets some of my texts every day. She's lost her husband the same year I lost my wife, 2020. If you would like to read ahead, you can just go to poetrypalacegiftshop.com. All my stuff, this book and two more volumes, counting hers, are on the site. There's nothing for sale. You can just read whatever you'd like. I mean, there's emails. I'd love to have your opinion on things. And uh, we're going to jump right back into volume one, where we're reading now, and see how much more of that we can get through. Of course, I have to remember where I was. <laughs> anyway, all right. So volume one, Diary of a Poet, Just Scribbled Words. Number 37. As I said before, all the poems are numbered. Long nights, I wish you were here. Lonely lights, you are replaced by a tear. Empty sights, my way is not clear. Feeling slights, drowning in my beer. Love rights, I only known to smear. Future plights, I wish you the best, my dear. Number 39. The beginning of a shiny new day. Another day of silence or searching. And I have grown to love the searching. Maybe too much. Number 40. I feel as a day. Worn. Exhausted. It's power spent to light the land. It's warmth drained by heat greedy fools. No thanks given for its hard work. No comfort prepared and enters eve. Yet as it passes, though it knows only self-satisfaction, it waves its glorious crimson goodbye. Number 41. What am I to do, you begging pity, I climbing from its pit. And of our living too, I love the city, you, my country lit. It was lonely we met, drenched in dreams, and reaching for the past. And what are we to get from what it seems? We fall apart so fast. What am I to do in the presence of what is shown? Fight my love with you, or live it all alone. 42, with those eyes that shine, come and warm my heart. Can't you see myself? I'm falling apart. I have no one at all to talk to. With those clouds of joy, come and rain on me. Wash me in friendship. I want to be free. Me and I alone spell tragedy. Simple talk I want. You can add a smile. I ask you to walk me through life for a while. My only regret is you might say no. 44, because I had to have a Roses Are Red poem. Roses are red, soon they are dead in the games we play. Now they said they must be fed many times each day. Candles drip wax, what does he ask? Ring sweet freedom's toll? Eternal tracks, heavy the tax. Prowlers, empty soul. 45. I sit down in the middle of life. There's only me in empty space. And I wonder why the clock ticks on when it does not affect the great who have come along while we are standing in the midst of someone, whoever they are, that our children's 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 children will come to know of essence and sit down 
in the middle of life, with only them in empty space. And they will wonder why the clock ticks on, when it does not affect the greats who have come along, while they are standing in the midst of someone. Number 47. A poem is a truth or story written for the world or oneself, sometimes for laughter, sometimes for tears, or as an autobiography to discover an idea or quality, an outburst of emotion. It can be read or sung for only what it says, or it can be understood differently by each reader. It is a tool for thought, how differently we all think. It is unusual that the reader should get the exact meaning the poet had. A poem alone is sometimes worthless, for the reader has not the train of mind conveyed by earlier works. A single poem is like a star, a collection, a universe. Number 49. Eyes, many colors, all a different shade. Some that go brighter, some that slowly fade. Those cold and lonely, those that warmly glow. Those asking, those that know. Eyes soft and shining, eyes swift and free. Eyes that are searching. Eyes that do not see. Eyes only lost. Eyes asking helplessly. Eyes void and empty. That used to be in me. Number 50. I am very old and I am far too young. I will die late too early with many songs unsung. I have lived too little in all too many lives. I have pierced and bent my heart with many knives. I have committed murder. I have been murdered too. I have fought many wars, none of which are through. I have seen the stars from their every side. In every galaxy I have tried to hide. I have loved so often, but always from afar. The door that guards my heart left permanently ajar. The first of all my memories were passion, hate, and fear. Eternities they have grown, and all I hold quite dear. I have lusted for rage, I have slept with greed. I have wrestled with compassion and hunted with need. I have preached pity and caressed kind, jumped with joy, with care intertwined. I have raced with rude and parried with pain. I have entrapped with envy by loneliness slain. Rallied with righteous, walked with depressed. Traveled with want, with hope been dressed. I have gone with glory, fathomed defeat. I have lounged with lies and darkened deceit. I have smelled suicide. And with agony paced, I have shivered with shame and a victory taste. I have rolled in regret, but not for myself, for none of these dusts set back on a shelf. Each time I feel it is long and hard, though my soul is shaken, not one of these barred. For all the lives my being possessed, I find them all I remember the best. Number 51, I am as free as the wind, do not tie me down, do not treat me as if I have sinned, you have been around, and just because I see more, do not make me pay, just because you are unsure, have games to play, I am as free as the wind, do not tie me down. Do not treat me as if I have sinned. You have been around. Number 52. 
When I was young, I was all alone, even though he was there. Because he thought in a different tone, I felt he did not care. At times I hated him, for reasons I did not know. I was quick to plant unfriendly seeds. He never let them grow. I don't really know him, but he's my friend. He doesn't know the pains he's helped to mend. Mostly the feelings go unsaid. That's good, words can confuse my head. Though I don't know exactly all that's right, I have needed him at times to be my light. I am wanting to exceed the whole even though I still dig. I am trapped within my little cage, needing to be big. I just can't say what's in my heart. Words do not define. It's a feeling within my soul, I guess forever mine. I don't really know him, but he's my friend. He doesn't know the pains he's helped to mend. Mostly the feelings go unsaid. That's good, words can confuse my head. Though I don't know exactly all that's real, I can't say, brother, how good you make me feel. Number 53. There you sat a stranger, an ornament of light, and I, a word arranger, you leapt into my sight. So I gave pictured word, expecting nothing more. Yet so full of written rage, your glances made me sure. Then, of course, time's power, I asked a moment's wait. Then also nerves did shower, a hope almost too late. Became voices without vision and traces from within. In the wall's first incision, acquaintances begin. Number 55. The winter wind on city streets, echoing footsteps without direction. Lamp posts sway, shadows scurry, full moons glow without affection. Fingers, cold eyes that water, parents pray for son and daughter. Lonely footprints in the snow, undecided where to go. Silhouettes of leafless trees, Skeletons dance in the breeze. Soft sweet snow that hides the trail. Damp desire, old and frail. But it is for home I yearn. Bridges back that all did burn. 56. A rabbit, frigid and shaking amongst the wolves' hungry wild. Full moon hides within the clouds from a young and innocent child. Fierce and chilled wintered wind without the warmth to watch the sun. Like the jury's last decision seems the end you've just begun. Like the mice who grasp the sunset as owl's hunger fills the night. Searching prayers fill the forest, danger prowls beyond our sight. Angelic symphonies always echo mask of evil, song of fear. Such lonely lack of satisfaction, shameless bold, a sparkling tear. Deep Shakespearean masquerade, alone an actor finds the stage, just as Ernest found the meeting, if the right words marred the page. Then at last Oswald's pleasure in his own blood-drenched scene, such as Edgar's wretched writing, dead and gone. What does it mean? Thank you very much for joining us for episode four of Poetry Palace Gift Shop. You can go to PoetryPalaceGiftShop.com and read any of this at whatever rate you want. You can also jump ahead to volume 18, which is internal revolutions that I'm writing to my late wife who passed January of 2020, just before the plague hit. Uh, that's why this show is on the air. People believe that it's helpful, and I'm glad for that. I mean, I don't really want to be known for writing poetry to my late wife, but that's what I do, and I wrote something this morning about the fact that even though four days from now, she will be four years removed from my life, she is still my muse, and I'm glad to write. Thank you, and I do hope you can come back and join us next week. Au revoir.